I'm Mark Seifter. And I'm Linda Zayas Palmer. And this is Arcane Mark. Welcome everyone to Build Hi. an Item Workshop with Arcane Mark. Today we are going to build an item. Maybe more than one item. We've mm -hmm. done more than one item before. And uh, to do that, as always, when we're building something at a workshop, we need to start with a concept. Because we build top down, not bottom up in our workshops. So if anyone in chat has a concept for an item, go ahead and put it into the chat. I will put them into a poll where you'll be able to vote for your favorite concepts. So at this point, feel free, put any kind of item concept. It can be mm -hmm. a specific, very specific, it can be kind of generic, like a water item or like that does water magic or specific like mm -hmm. a dagger that's carried by a, uh, a Honduran white bat and mm -hmm. summons a five snakes out of it, each of which have amber eyes. Now that wants something that's high level. Numbat wants to see a high... A concept is high-level item. Okay. So concept one is high-level item. Mm-hmm. Concept two, let's see. Maybe, no, maybe that's just a cricket chirp sound. Yeah. is not a concept I for think it, I think it's a cricket chirp, yep. But in, just in case it is, I'll put cricket chirp item into uh, <laughs> it as concept two. There you go. Uh, all right. So Numbat is suggesting a property rune as another concept. And RP Gamerus suggests a pair of daggers that work when using them in tandem. Now, uh, we did one before when we had a key blade and a uh, lock shield that were needed to be used by separate people. So we'll figure <laughs> out later if if we do the daggers, if they're the same person uses both or like a two weapon each, type or two different, different people, people each yeah. use one of them. All right. Whether that's like a two weapon thing or like an X slash type move. Mm hmm. So we have three ideas so far: high level item, cricket chirp item, or the four um, mm -hmm. property, property rune and daggers. the daggers. And yeah, RPG, uh, RP gamers apparently in Treasure Vault, there's a few like dub weapons that two different people used. And in fact, our very last build an item mm -hmm. workshop was the key and the sh shield. So you too can watch this on YouTube if if it was up on YouTube, which it's not, not yet. but it might be sometime mm -hmm. um and see the the key and the and the uh the shield with the lock all right so numbat says uh a high level suit of specific armor with uh stealth stashed quick draw daggers there you go oh here's another one a high-level geomancy staff that changes terrain climate. Hard to control. Hello, first-time chatter, NPC Mook. Welcome. All right, so we have six ideas so I think far. Six. That's pretty good. Does this anyone else good. have any? I don't want to block anyone yeah. else. So if you have any other ideas, put it in. Otherwise, I am going to. Press enter, like, pretty soon, and then you'll vote for uh, idea one through six. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give just a little bit more time um, for other people to go through. But uh, so basically... I guess, I guess one, one question here is, is, is a high-level item a separate concept? Because we have two high-level items that are in here that are specific items. And I feel like I they think were just... that high-level item is a separate concept. You would have to be voting for... Just the high level item. So that is we not like, the you armor. like high level. You want a high level item, but you don't want either of those two specific. You don't concepts. want the armor. Yeah, or the or, or the, the high level yeah. geomancy staff. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's if you want a high level item, but not those. All right, Makes so nobody sense. else did it. So vote by putting into chat one, two, three, four, five, or six. I see two votes for six. Two votes for six. One vote for five. One vote for five. Oh, uh, this is going to be close, maybe. 
Although, what do I know? It's a two to one ratio. Oh, it's maybe not going to be close. Three for six. Ooh, oh, another one for five. Again. Three to two. Another one for six. That's four to two. Okay. Another one for six. I'm calling it. Even though technically there's enough people who are still watching right now that it might have come in for five. I'm calling it for the Geomancy staff that does. It's hard to control doing terrain climate related things. But his staff might be a little easier and quicker to build. No, but this one's a it. little, maybe very challenging because staves have a lot of their budget put into the spells that are in them. Mm -hmm. But this one, both claims that it is a staff while also having what sounds like substantial abilities that are not staff abilities mm -hmm. in a way that will wind up either... So we're, I'm going to put another vote here for how we can mm -hmm. proceed with this. So yes. I'm, uh, I I think this is a very interesting item to build, mm -hmm. and it reveals the difficulty of it. So I'm going to put in three ways we can proceed. Uh, Uh, so the first way is not a staff focus on geomancy powers so mm -hmm. that they're very significant. It's like a rod or some other long scepter -y thing that is not mm -hmm. a staff. Second is, yes, it's a staff. Geomancy powers are very minor. And three is, yes, it's a staff, but the spells are terrible mm -hmm. and the geomancy powers are significant. So vote for one, two, or three. Mm-hmm. Because there is no option other than one of those three. Because if the Seomancy powers are significant, the spells will be terrible. Yes. If it also has staff spells. And if the if it has the spell like all the spells, the powers of Geomancy will be minor because staves okay. always have a minor kicker. Whereas if it um if it's not a staff, then the Geomancy powers can just be everything. It's just like a long it looks like it looks thing. like um not a staff focus on geomancy powers has it over yes staff but spells are terrible and geomancy powers are significant yes, and no and one almost wants no minor, one wanted no one's minor this, geomancy powers that's because the thing that yeah. uh that Dustin put in there for it to do mm -hmm. was uh sounded really cool so nobody wanted to not do the cool thing that was in there so this so it makes a lot of sense so this is not a this is like yeah this is not a staff what is it I get what does it look like visually then. Um, right. So it's a long staff like thing. Mm -hmm. So it's probably like a scepter, I would think. In fact, maybe it is called the Geomancer's Scepter because the idea yeah. is just like uh, you're trying to rule over uh, rule the over terrain. Rule over the elements, yes. But the terrain may rule over you. So what level is this? We know it's high. Yes, we need, uh, we need your help to determine mm -hmm. the level. It was defined as high level. So I will. Pro uh, probably, so I'm going to put any, yeah. a cutoff here because the ones and threes yeah. might have been votes for one to three. If you vote for something that is below level 10, that yeah. is single digits, I will ignore your vote. Yes, but everyone else, vote definition. and pick any level for this. If it's above 20, then it becomes, and, and that wins, it becomes an artifact, even mm -hmm. though we didn't say it was. So that'll be, uh, that'll be good times. Uh, if it's an artifact. So far we have a 17 and a 15 yes, and a 15. it's probably not going to be an artifact at this rate. And a 15. It sounds like a lot of people 15. think 15. Wow, a lot of people think 15. Okay. Okay. We've got this. It's a 15th level and it is the Geomancer Scepter. Yeah, 15. We're Here doing we this. We're doing this. Geomancer Scepter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the Geomancer archetype out yeah. because this could be helpful to us. Yes. Okay. So, uh, first of all, Let's remind ourselves what the Geomancer does as an archetype is that basically if you are in a certain type of terrain, then when you expend a spell slot to cast a spell of the corresponding trait to that terrain, then it will give you special terrain attunement effects. Mm -hmm. All right. So, for example... If you're in the plains, then you gain temporary hit points when you cast a plant spell. And if you're in the desert and you cast a fire spell, you can fatigue your opponent until they drink water or another liquid, right? Mm -hmm. uh, other things that geomancers do are shift their attunement. Now, that might be similar to what uh, we're trying to do here. Um, they also have a shared attunement where you can try to give the attunement benefit to uh, one ally instead of yourself. A rough terrain stance that makes difficult terrain around them. An attuned stride where they move through terrain with ignoring difficult terrain. 
draw from the land where they gain temporary hit points by drawing from the land where they gain a terrain uh, attunement effect. Uh, read the land, which is uncommon, commune with nature. Shifting terrain, which makes a opponent clumsy because the terrain, like, mm -hmm. clutches at them. Terrain shield, where, like, a giant rock or something from the terrain blocks an attack against you. And then quick attunement, where you can attune uh, once per day super fast. So so this item, though, was talking about changing the terrain. Yes. So with the Geomancer, with the Geomancer, um, with the Geomancer archetype, does how big of an area does it have to be to count as like being in that terrain? Well, I think we're gonna say since it's the Geomancer scepter, <laughs> and since there's a fourth level feat that already lets you like once per ten minutes, uh, like shift your attunement mm -hmm. to basically kind of like in Chrono Cross, like you cast the fire spell and then yeah. it counts as being in a desert after the first fire spell, then your future fire basically, spell. Basically what I basically what I was getting at is we want to make sure that it works with the Geomancer archetype yes. to let you change the terrain around you. Exactly. So I'm going to say that what happens is this. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine terrains, one of which is like sky of one of which is aquatic mm -hmm. which like arguably you can't really change the terrain to well i mean actually let's think about this you can't really change the terrain to sky aquatic or underground yes if it is underground you could make it into an underground swamp or whatever but you probably can't change it to sky aquatic or underground because you would need to create so much mm -hmm. water and then why didn't it just like move away and it's not sky if you're already on the ground and you're not underground if you're and if on you're the in surface. the sky you're not any of these other ones etc yes yes um so we could make a d6 with so we arctic can make desert it a d6 forest. arctic desert plains forest and swamp and it, it, a mountain plains oh uh, wait arctic desert arctic desert forest, forest mountain, mountain plains, plains swamp. swamp arctic yes. desert forest mountain plains swamp yes, yes. that's correct mm -hmm. that's right uh and that should get us a lot of what we want. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, if Arctic was an island and we ignored desert, then we could use draw a Magic the Gathering card in order to determine <laughs> um, which of these we were uh, we were doing. But uh, nevertheless, it's it, it would be a one d six that it has an effect based on one of these six, except. Um, it was mentioned in the high concept for this mm -hmm. that we can make an attempt to uh, we can make a nature check to try to determine which one it's going to be. Okay, can I see the concept again real quick? Because I think it was there's, there's an idea of like wrestling against it and stuff. Yes, way. it said that it was difficult to um, it was difficult to, to do difficult so. to control difficult to control it. It's hard capital H hard to do so. Yes. So it's probably since it's capital H hard, yeah. a hard nature DC, uh, for level fifteen, which is. So is that if you succeed at that, might you be able to then influence what it becomes when you when you unleash its power, and otherwise it's let's random? See. Is that the idea? Um. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a level based DC. So it's DC thirty four. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that's not hard. That's no, that's normal. that's normal. Thirty six would be, but I, you know what. 36 is good. 36 is a hard DC for level 15. So, uh, what happens on the DZ36 nature check is that you, uh, you attempt the check, and it's hard to control it. So, on a... Let's say on a failure... Then, uh, so the, on a critical failure, it just rolls randomly 1d6. Yeah. Uh, you have literally no control. And on a regular failure, then, uh... Maybe you get it to start with, and then it... On a, re on a regular bit. failure, you pick, pick one terrain that you don't like. And you roll a d6, and if it is the one that you like, the that you you selected that you didn't want, then you can roll again. That feels a little fiddly compared to lasting for like one round or lasting for like a short duration or something like that. 
Sure, but the critical failure is going to last for the whole time randomly. It's probably worse to pick and have it last for a short duration. How about um, on a failure, you can re-roll after the first time and you have to take the second one? Yeah, that makes sense. Because, like, that makes so, sense. No, no, keep the critical failure. Yeah, I'm copying it. And on, so on the failure, um, we can re-roll, but we have to take the second result. On a success, we roll twice and take the result that we want. And on a critical success, we just pick. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it's all about rolling. In fact, at this point, let's actually adjust the DC down to be uh, DC... So instead of DC 36, the hard DC, DC 32, the easy DC. Mm -hmm. Because you still need a critical success to, to actually, actually get the full pick result. the one that you want. So it's basically DZ42, which is a, yeah. a level 21 DC, to actually just pick it in, in essence, unless you roll that 20. So that's what we've got here. So um, then it is going to create an effect depending on which of those six terrains you got. And it will only work if you are not in the sky. Or underground or, or in the water? No, or in the water. You can still do it underground. And it'll just make an underground forest. But if you're in the sky or in the water, you can't really do the other things. But you can still have an arctic area in, in <laughs> underground, presumably. So, um, it's going to need to have an effect that is powerful enough for a 15th level item. Yes. And so if we think about that, we also want to think about its frequency. So I'm going to have chat help us decide about this. So um, I'm going to have you vote between several options. Very strong effect once per day. Strong effect once per hour. Uh, moderate effect for level 15, so it's still pretty strong. Once per 10 minutes. Or uh, weaker effect once per minute or at will. And we'll figure it out. Like if it lasts for a minute, it's once per minute, then you kind of can just always have it up. So vote one, two, three, or four. And we will decide how how many times you can use this Geomancer's Scepter and how big the effect is. That will also help us determine what some of the actions will be. We have two votes for very strong effect once per day and one vote for strong effect once per hour. Another for strong effect once per hour. That makes it a tie so far between the once per hour and once per day. Let's see what we go to from there. Are we going to get a tie break? Ah, uh, no, we didn't. We got another for in each direction. It's a complete balance between once per day, very strong effect, and once per hour, strong effect. With this Geomancer Scepter. Then we got a pound sign from RPG Gamers, which is probably weaker effect once per minute or at will, but with accidentally hitting shift. Mm -hmm. But it may... Oh, no, that would be a three. That would be moderate effect once yeah, per yeah. minute accidentally hitting great. shift. But it could also just be a pound sign. Mm -hmm. no bad none of the Nobad said this was a very difficult decision. Yeah, it's tough. You have to think about what, what you want to get out of it. Uh... So, right now, it, oh, RB Gamers actually meant two. So, it was neither oh, there we go. a three nor a pound sign. So, okay, two is a uh, strong effect once per hour is in the lead by only one vote. So, I'm going to give you all you out here there that might want a very strong effect once per day. Uh, just a short time to uh, bring it back to, a, uh, to an even tie. And otherwise, we're going to go with by just one vote. A strong effect once per hour. So if you want strong effect once per hour, you want to lock that in, type 2, and hit enter. If you want a very strong effect once per day for our item, hit 1. And then it will bring us back to a tie, and we'll have to figure out what to do uh, from there.
And if we see nothing else, then going once, going twice. And sold to a strong effect once per hour on items. So we are built disposable hands, but we are building the Geomancer Scepter, which can randomly evoke one of six different terrains. One, and one, now we've determined once per hour. It's level 15 item. It's got a pretty strong effect once per hour. So I've got our frequency of once per hour requirement if you're not in the sky or the water, and I have the effect channel, the power of the elements, and attempt to shape the terrain around you. This power is unstable. Attempt to DC 32 nature check with the following results. On a critical success, you can just choose one of the terrains from the D6 table. On a success, you roll twice on the table and take pick your favorite. On a failure, you roll and to determine what when you generate. And if you don't like it, you can re-roll, but you must take the second result. And on a critical failure, you just roll once. So for one thing, also, I feel like when you're holding this scepter that commands um, over nature, that you this is probably going to give you a plus two item bonus on nature checks. Yes, which will help you to sense. make its nature check difficulty as well. So that also it gives it like a usage of held item. in one hand. Yes. I mean, it's a scepter. Yeah. So I think it makes sense that, that it would give it a usage of held in one hand. Okay, so let's figure out exactly what it's going to do. And I'd like to theme it based off of a more powerful version of what the Geomancer gets in each of these areas. Mm -hmm. Because you think about the fact that a Geomancer, somebody who is a Geomancer is going to want to be able to take this item and not feel like they're cheated out of it because the powers overlap. Yes, but I want it to be kind of like similar to that. Mm -hmm. So that, so first of all, um, the effects should have the appropriate trait. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should see, since it normally says if you cast a spell with the given trait, then you get the effect. So is this about affecting the spells that you cast, or is this about changing the terrain locally to cause weird effects? So I would say that it is changing the terrain, yeah. because that's what the concept was. Mm -hmm. But that it itself, so like let's, let's give an example. The forest one mm -hmm. should have the plant trait. Because that is the trait. Yeah, that's And it should, sense. the activation for the forest one has the plant trait. And also a special effect, since this is not a spell from your slot, should say that um, activating the Geomancer's Scepter is, um, uh, gives you the terrain attunement effect if you are already in the same terrain. Even though it's not a spell from your spell slot. What do you mean already in the same terrain? Like, so if you if you yeah. were in a forest and you did forest, you would get the enemies getting clumsy effect. But if you change the terrain around you into a forest, would you gain the terrain at two minutes at that point? No, you get... same reason that, yeah, that um, same reason that the ability to change shifting terrain where you change or, or not that's a different one. But the ability that changes the attunement to forest doesn't also give you the effect of the attunement the first time when you change it to yeah, forest. Yeah, so if you activate it, it gives you automatically gives the current the attunement for your current terrain automatically? No. If you activate it and it's in your current terrain and it matches, then it, it gives a what attunement. Do you, I don't understand what you mean by the current terrain. Let's find a cleaner way to phrase it then. So activating the Geomancer Receptor in... What? It's Just say that act, even though activating the Geomancer Receptor <laughs> is not casting a spell from your spell slot, you still gain terrain attunement effects... Oh, yeah, that makes sense. From its activation if the terrain matches. Which actually interestingly means that um, you would gain the planes attunement effect for using the forest activation because they both have plant as the trait even just before you change it into the forest. Yeah. Basically, the point is that normally activating a plant item does not give you your Geomancer ability. But this is the Geomancer mm -hmm. scepter, so it should give you your Geomancer ability every time. Um, secondly, it, um, it's going to change the area in a 30 foot emanation to, uh, like visually and metaphysically resemble the terrain from the scepter, uh, thus causing all geomancers to, uh, to change their attunement, yeah, that are in the area to change their attunement to the new terrain. 
as long as they're in the area. So, um, at that point... So it automatically changes the attunement of any geomancers yes, in the area. Yes, and it's a two-action activation. Mm -hmm. So at that so point, now we need question? to create six special effects. So I think that the forest one, uh, like, so forest for geomancers is all about, like, the trees, like, making you clumsy by, like, grabbing at you. So so hold up a sec. So hold, hold on. So if you, let's say that you're in the forest. Yes. And you try to activate it to the mountain, then it changes your... It or changes let's your assume thing. that you successfully activated it to the mountain. Yes. Then, then since mountain, uh, since forest requires plant and you did not use the plant thing, mm -hmm. you do not get the forest attunement effect if you were a geomancer. Yes. But if you change it, But yes. it then changes the entire terrain to mountain, giving yes. the mountain benefit from this item. And in the mm -hmm. future, earth yes. spells will give you the mountain benefit because yes. it is now a mountain. What's the, uh, what was the, what were the associated elements on uh, plains and swamp? Or traits, rather? On plains and swamp. Yeah, plains and this. forest were both uh, plant and swamp is actually also plant. So a lot of them are plant, meaning that you have a decent chance of getting the effect if you are mm -hmm. in a forest, plains, or swamp. Whereas the ones that we're doing are plant, 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 earth, fire, and cold. Yes. All right. So uh, meanwhile, uh, I'm thinking that for the... Also, like... You know what? Since we're changing the entire terrain, usually things that are large area control are three actions. So let's make the activation three actions. Uh, that does increase the power we can do. For yes, certainly. I think so. We we're we're changing it to be in our terrain area, and so and we're also probably going to put a lot of annoying things for our enemy in there. Oh, for sure. Uh, and not for ourselves because we're fun. Not for ourselves. So let's say that the forest one, since trees are lashing out and causing clumsy is now making it so that the um the plants in or like the the trees that appeared like that visually appeared when you visually and metaphysically made it look like a forest mm -hmm. are lashing out at uh all creatures in that 30 foot area of forest except you except for you Actually, except for you and your allies. So all your foes will get lashed out at by the trees. And uh, what it will do is give, uh, because of the fact that the, the roots are lashing out at everybody, they then everyone in that area takes a minus 15 foot circumstance penalty to speeds. Oh, sorry, all your foes. Yeah. And then um, when you activated it, and then once per round on your turn until the activation ends, which is, let's say... A minute? Ten minutes. Or ten minutes. Oh, yeah. In case you want to set it up in advance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once per round on your turn... Uh, is this a sustain effect? No. It just is up. Sweet. So once per round on your turn, you can specifically have the trees specifically hate one person and be like, no, you take that, you in particular. And Is that a free action to the pick yeah, target? It just, yeah, it's a free action on your turn, once per turn, to just pick a target and the uh, trees will attempt with a, let's call it plus 25... Uh, a plus 25 attack roll against the target's AC, and on a success, they will immobilize them for one round or unless uh, or until they escape against DC 35, whichever comes first. Nice. So that is going to be the, the tree one. So, given that they, uh, you get temporary hit points from the, uh, the, the planes, then I think that the planes effect should do something about healing. So, uh, So, this would then presumably be your allies in the radius. Yes. Because it's so, going to be selected. I think so. So, it would create, like, healing planes. That, Grasses that appear. When yep. Store by so this one should office. only last for one minute because it's going to be healing and yes. it's going to heal too much if it lasts for longer than a minute. 
Actually, we could probably increase the healing if we reduce the duration, and that probably makes it more useful. Yeah. So it restores uh, vitality to your allies while harming undead that are in the area, too, because why not? So what if we reduced the duration to three rounds so that we could maximize the amount of healing that you get per Sounds round? Sounds good. And then we said that it gave you um, 4d8 healing to all your allies that are within that area each round. What if one of your allies is an undead? And I would say when they start their turn in the area, they gain uh, the 4d8. And it also affects you. Uh, so I would say living allies within the area regain the hit points and undead foes within the area take that amount of positive damage. Yes. With um with no save. It's not really that much damage for level 15. They can move out of it if they want to. Unless you also grapple them in there. So let's do that for the, uh, the planes effect. Let's see. <laughs> City of Warlock says, Roll 1d6 to replace the map with one of the following Pathfinder Game Mastery flip maps. <laughs> Uh, but we are, we're not getting a kickback from the flip bats line, so we're not going to do that one. All right, let's see. So um, that's good for two of them. What are the other four that we're going to do here? Give so, me a sec. I'm figuring out how to format in the uh, duration yeah, variation. Yeah, I'll take a look at some of these other things. All right, so it's like the mountain gives you some physical resistance. Except adamantine, because it's the rugged endurance of the mountain. The desert is fatiguing the enemy. Arctic is slowing down Depends speed. Upon you. And swamp is fumigating with persistent poison damage. Out. When this changed from a staff, it suddenly became way more complicated. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think I figured out a way to, okay. to format this. All right. So, ready for the swamp? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, in the swamp is going to become... That entire area becomes difficult terrain as well as hazardous terrain. That deals five poison damage to an enemy each time they enter one of the affected squares, but not your allies. But it's still difficult terrain for your allies, presumably, because it's like literally. Slow. Yes, it is difficult terrain it is difficult for everyone, terrain for but it only you? It, um, except for you. And it poisons your enemies, but not your allies. You have commanded nature. As well. Pray as it does not get altered further. Terrain so. that deals how much? Five poison damage. Yes, five poison damage. Damage per round to. Or not per round, per, per square. square. Per, oh, per square, of course. Per That's square, how hazardous terrain right, of works. Course, to your foes. foes. Yep. So that fits with swamp being mm -hmm. persistent poison damage. How long does this one last? So this one is pretty nasty. Uh, I would say just one minute. Mm -hmm. Compared to the the Compared tree to the, thing the, is the like the not. Yeah. The tree thing only hampers them, so that's why I thought it could last for 10 minutes. That totally makes sense. Also, you don't know in advance for sure if you're going to get the one that you want for pre-buff, so that can make it harder to use the 10-minute one for sure in advance, but not at higher levels. Mm -hmm. Then again, its uh, attack bonus gets worse at higher levels as well against some kinds of enemies. So that's half of them. Mm -hmm. The other ones we're looking at are Desert, Arctic... Yeah, and, and mountain. And mountain. Okay, so Arctic is probably going to be some kind of, like, freezing people, flurries of cold type thing. I think that's probably accurate. So we want an effect that's good for once per hour 
for a um for this 15th level item mm -hmm. so i'd say that it probably is going to be something like um like making a in the arctic area there's like mm -hmm. a blizzard that selectively is only harming your enemies And so, like bludgeoning and cold damage from yes. hail, and so each round for up to one minute, uh, your foes within the area take two d eight bludgeoning and two d eight cold. Is it those who begin their turn in the area? Uh, yes, or those that would be um. Creatures who are initially in the area take it, as well as those who end their turn in the area. Sounds good. So they, they, they should get out of there if they can. And this is no save. This is no... Or maybe it should have a reflex save, because that is a lot more damage mm -hmm. than... Um, so... Some of the other ones. Basic reflex? It's 4d8, which is, I guess, the same that we were doing to the undead before. It but was they, the same we were doing to the undead before, with no saves. And and now we're saying that it, they get to go to the end of their turn instead of the beginning of their turn, but that it does initially happen. And the undead did have no save against it. Maybe we could give it a reflex... It feels like if, if you're pelting them with hail, they should be able to avoid it. So maybe we'll give them a reflex save, but make it harder to yeah. get out by making it a difficult terrain as Oh, well. yeah, that makes sense. So that it's more annoying to leave it than the one that has no save for the undead. One except you. Uh, DC... You just don't care. All right, what's our DC on our basic reflex save? Our basic reflex save will make it DC 35. It's one higher than usual for a um, 15th level item on the grounds that you don't really always get to pick what the heck this is doing. And you could wind up picking something that was not good. So we're going to give you... Not quite the standard DC. We'll give you very, very slightly higher DC. So the undead opponents was uh, beginning their turn in that area. Yes, but it doesn't happen immediately, and that way you can calculate heals on your allies more yeah. easily. So this one is immediately plus ending their turn in the area. Yeah, and the other one is just beginning in the area. In the area. Yeah, but then not yes. immediately. I want to make sure that they're all clear on when yes. the damage comes in. It absolutely needs to be. So that's very important. Mm -hmm. So um. Let's see. So desert is, I associate with like heat and scouring sandstorms or like sinking into the sand. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see what we can do with that. So we already have the idea that they might become fatigued from being in the, um, in the area. So we can also potentially, um, turn the area into, uh, into sand. That could be pretty fun. So what if we turn the it, we not only does it visually look like sand but it actually is sand so it has difficult terrain because it's sand and not only that but uh your it's difficult terrain for everyone except you and your foes take a minus 2 status penalty to acrobatics check to balance and tumble through athletics checks to high jump and long jump take a minus 2 status penalty That's right to acrobatics checks to what and tumble through? To balance and tumble, balance through, and tumble through and athletics checks to high jump and long jump. And not only that, but also... Uh, athletics checks to high jump and long jump. jump. Yes, because it's shifting underneath them. Yes. Also, um, they creatures that begin their turn in the area or choose to enter it must attempt a reflex save. Must attempt a DC 35. That's right. DC 35 reflex save. So on a critical success, uh, so actually this could be foes that enter. No, not just all. Yeah, it's generally just been foes, foes who get hurt. On a critical success, they ignore the um, they ignore the penalty 
to skill checks, but it's still difficult to raid. Or maybe just on any success. So a success yeah. is they can ignore the penalty to skill sense. checks. On a failure, uh, they don't ignore the penalty to skill checks. And on a critical failure, they are also immobilized for one round or until they escape. Because they just, the sand is too shifty and they're kind of like immobilized in it, almost like quicksand. So that could be the critical failure. Well, in that case, I would put that text for the penalty in the failure line as opposed to in the upper ability as failure, but the foe is also immobilized for one round or until they escape. Yep. This feels weaker than the forest one. Really? Because it affects every creature. Is it stronger than the first one, maybe? This one affects all foes. Oh, I, I see. No, I think it's about the same. The first one has to hit AC. This one, they have to critically fail, but it affects literally everything. Uh, and the first one doesn't create difficult terrain, but it does give a penalty It kind of creates speed. worse than difficult terrain. Though. It depends. If the enemy has a high speed, speed which at level 15 a lot of things do, it's not as useful as difficult terrain. Alright, I will move the... Um... So we have this that sand effect. So the last but not least is going to be the mountain. So I'll just put success, no effect, failure, foes take a minus two, status bonus, yada yada, and then critical failure as failure, sir. That All makes right. sense? Formatted. Yes. So the last thing that we have here is the mountain. So the mountain's effect for a Geomancer is that it gives, like, resistance um, against physical damage. So, uh... So this is going to be another one where if this is going to be a protective ability, then it's, again, like the healing ability. It's duration so, going to have a huge impact on how much it can That's create. correct. So, um, let's say that this one is a one minute duration or, hmm, yeah, one minute duration mm -hmm. and, um, you and your allies who are within this like visual mountain and metaphysical mountain that you created, uh, gain resistance 5 to physical damage. I think you have to remain team. within the mountain for this. As long as you're in the area. Mm -hmm. Only while you're within the area. If you leave, you lose it. If you come back later, you get it again. I agree that you have to stay in the mountain. And the this resistance to physical damage, except out of bad team, is cumulative with the effect from the mountain geomancy terrain attunement. So, it, like, they, they combine... So you would get five plus the spells level for one round if you then cast the yes. spell. And all your allies also get it. So it basically makes you very tough in the area. But it's one of the few that does not, uh, other than the healing planes one against not undead, that does not mess over your enemies. Okay. So there we go. We've created uh, a number of powerful effects, but not super powerful because it's not once per day. Mm-hmm. Uh, you randomly get one of these effects, or you, you might be able to roll twice, or you might be able to take control of it if you get a critical success on your nature. How expensive is this thing? Okay, so um, I would say that it's going to be near the upper end of a 15th level item, but not all the way there, because if it's random properties, I think yeah. even having one higher DC than the standard DC, it does not pay back completely for dealing with the... complete the, randomness of this thing. Yes, for dealing with the capriciousness of this item. So instead of being the full value mm -hmm. 6,500 gold piece item, it may be 6,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. All right. Let's go with that. Okay. Makes sense to me. So we've got that, and we've got the name, and we've got the all the DCs, and this is a... I knew this item was going to take a while, because <laughs> first we had to figure out whether it was actually a staff, that's and true, it wasn't. That's true. Now I'm curious about our word count. We're way over word count for any kind of piezo item. Oh, yeah, for sure. We are not recommending that you design items like this. 542 words. Yes. This is there very, you very it. complicated. Yeah, most high-level items are much simpler than this because they don't have to have a random effect between mm -hmm. six different terrains. 
even just one of these that you could just maybe there is um this exists but maybe there's another version that's the same level oh uh, yeah i think this is a rare item it probably is maybe there's another version that's the same level that only could do one of the six and it doesn't it has like maybe a um a lower dc on the ones with dcs and no difference on the ones that don't have dcs and a lower attack bonus but it's just like you know the the forest geomancers scepter and and it's basically there's six different items that only do one of the six it cannot do the other ones no matter what and is a little bit weaker at about the same level mm -hmm. maybe the exact same level so it's like okay you don't want the random one here's six other items and they're much shorter much shorter items so there we have it we have created this um incredibly complicated geomancer scepter item i think that's about it for today um so let's say bye to youtube then figure out our survey with everyone who's still here and do our outro bye youtube see you next time bye